It's uh, four o'clock. Let me call the uh, uh, the uh, okay, <laughs> November sixth uh, uh, meeting of the uh, Northampton License Commission. <coughs> Excuse me. To order. Um, we are um, recording uh, this meeting. <coughs> This time, as is the custom with Northampton public meetings, I'll ask for any public comment on any subject that is not on the agenda for the day. Uh, if anybody has anything to uh, say during public comments, seeing none, uh, I'll move on to the uh, uh, next item on the agenda, item number five, a uh, letter to Mr. Eric Sewer, requesting Mr. Sewer's attendance regarding uh, two um, all-alcohol licenses he holds. And um, the um, opinion of the city solicitor uh, is um, something we will be discussing during this item. So um, we um, we received from uh, the city solicitor, Mr. Seawolf, who is here today to answer any questions, an opinion that the two licenses in question. One is at the Old Baptist Church, and the other is on uh, Center Street. Can be considered pocket licenses because of the amount of time that's elapsed since the licenses are granted that they have not been in operation. So, um, guided by the uh, solicitor's opinion, uh, we've asked Mr. Seward here to uh, ask his intentions for these licenses. To He has updated us in the past, but I think that given this new um, uh, interpretation of the uh, <coughs> licenses, we wanted to hear uh, more from this. So, uh, Mr. Sewer, I missed my introduction. I thought you would come to the room already. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, let me just, uh, did you catch any of that? No, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, we uh, asked you here to discuss two licenses. As you know, uh, we have the opinion of uh, Mr. Seawald, the city solicitor, regarding um, uh, his view of these licenses, whether or not they're pocket licenses that have been in operation since uh, for a number of years. So uh, we, um, uh, all the commission members, I believe, have read the, uh, the opinion. We also have uh, an earlier opinion issued by the ABCC regarding the well, interpretation or just an expansion or elucidation or whatever of the, um, of the, of the statute the Mass General Laws regarding pocket licenses. So we are informed by those things, but we would also like to be informed by you at this point as to the status of these licenses. If I may, I'd like to submit to the Commission just a, a basic timeline that we put together since the last June Attorney Seawald's interpretation and read through that, but there's certain things missing that I thought the commission should, should have, and it's my bad for not coming from the commission from the June 5th meeting to present to explain to you what was happening. This okay. is first for the for 298 Main Street. Mr. Seward, do you have enough to copy that? Sure. Okay. <coughs> and, uh, just for your information, we sent out the permit history for those two parcels. The, the intent uh, clearly is to is to get this facility open and and to get a new building permit in hand so we can we can complete the work. There's been certain things that have kept us from doing so, but we've been working as diligently as possible. We've been in the building commission a number of building inspectors office a number of times. Um, both the project manager, architect, and structural engineer have been working. And as of this Friday, the final submission to us of the new interpretation of the code, the interpretation of the new building code, um, was going to be submitted to the architect, Tom Douglas, who was then going to package everything and get it into the building inspector's office so the building inspector can then review and reissue a permit. Uh, since I've met with you, that there was not the realization previous that we fell under a new building code, which is the eighth issue. When we started, it was the sixth issue, and there were certain requirements that were 
<coughs> necessary to meet prior to a building code but we weren't able to just get another license, we couldn't extend the existing license, and we weren't able to get a new, uh, sorry, permit, not, not able to get a new permit until this additional work was done. So all that is to do with the Old Baptist Church property? This is all, this is specific to 298 Street. Um, many years ago now, um, you originally came for the commission, and at the time, um, we approved this and also approved other things regarding the yes. what you plan to do there, which is basically a function hall, as I recall. It's not that strong. And um, you know, there were there at the time there was there was considerable neighborhood opposition to it, but nevertheless, we uh, permitted the project to go ahead. And this has been many, many years now. And um, perhaps you could tell us why it's only now that that um, you're trying to overcome what you say are structural problems and no, no, other no, sort of building code. No, issues. no structural issues. The structural work is almost 100%. It is 100% completed. The issue is that there's been a change in the building code, and I, I can only speak as a, as a novice in terms of what's happened, but when we took out our original permit, it was under a specific code, which I believe was the, was, was the sixth edition, and it's now the eighth edition. And with that, there's certain changes that the state makes the requirements, and because we had to go forward and have to reapply for a new permit, because the permit had expired, we have to follow all of the conditions that are set forth in the eighth edition. So that was a little hiccup that took several months. Our last meeting was just in June, and the time does go by very, very quickly, especially with people's summer schedules. But pretty diligently worked to getting all of that stuff put together, and your proposals that went back and forth from, from structural in here in terms of what had to be done for review. All of that information is being submitted, at least from the discussions we had as of this Friday, should be submitted. And I think, based on the conversations we've had with the building inspector um, and with architect, that once that has been submitted and hopefully properly interpreted by building inspector that we should be issued a new permit and then 100% set to go and move forward with the petition. You know, it's been a very, very difficult project. I appreciate all of the cooperation that you guys have extended to me through the last few years, but this is not a standard um, front of the mill bar that's being opened. It's a very large facility. There are lots and lots of issues that we dealt with structurally that have all been done, including new people that was done years ago, including all new, uh, you know, new roof and new, uh, all new heating equipment. The boiler room looks like, uh, you know, a boiler room on a submarine. And there's an extensive amount of mechanical work and structural work that's been done there. We're so close to getting this to the point where we can start again. And it is costing me thousands of dollars a month to have this building sit as it sits, besides the revenue that would come in. And, um, you know, I, I again ask for cooperation and, and, and would work diligently in terms of having updates which you know, would be required updates from the building inspector um, regarding the architect having an update building inspector we then have that information get to the license commission so you see that the work is actually commencing as well as on the other project which I'll talk to you about and I think we are we are moving forward with both of them um, and that you know my, my intent is as discussed with you in that basic timeline of, there's been an awful lot of work that's been done since June 5th. Um, we've not been sitting on our hands at all. Um, there's been a lot of work that's, that's been done in terms of moving forward to get all of this work in to the building inspector's office so that we can get the permit done. It wasn't just a submission. If it were just a submission, we would have been <coughs> the permit the 14th of June. I, 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 I think I'm following you there uh, as to the number of obstacles you have, but the um, and I'll, I'll just make um, a response right now, and then I'll ask uh, commission members also to respond to, to uh, what we've discussed to this point. But there hasn't been a, a building permit issue since 2009. Now it's, uh, uh, it's four and a half years. And um, we, I can't remember, you transferred this license to um, uh, we transferred this license to that address in 2009. Was that the year, though? And it's not. It's not. Um, I don't have any information here. When did we? When did we first permit this, this the, 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 the function hall? When did we first have the hearing where we the, the 
Thank you. Permit was approved for transfer to this location on November 19, 2008. The last building permit on this location was 2008. There hasn't been a building permit. And what Mr. Sue is telling you is that there have been two additions of the building code since his last permit. Right. Well, Commissioner, you, you would, you would typically you would only get a building permit. In other words, it's not like you would apply for a building permit on an annual basis. You typically issue a building permit for construction, and you typically complete the construction. Because we stalled during that period of time, the state, during the economic downturn, also um, granted, I believe it was a two-year extension to existing permits that were in place. And we just missed that extension when we went in to um, kind of reactivate the license. And so you would tip it, it's not like there'd be multiple permits. I mean, clearly, all of the subcontractors, electrical, mechanical, et cetera, et cetera, would be getting their permits. Those permits were all in previous when we submitted under our master permit federal heavy permit. So we're now we would now just be getting the permit necessary to get, you know, to reactivate our existing permit because of the new building code. We have to fully apply again and that's what we're doing. And I would be more persuaded if if this were um, you know a year and a half, maybe even two years, but this is now four and a half years since then. And we really it's it's hard to see that there's been very much from the outside, I, I understand what you said. You've given us updates before, but it really is now past the point of reasonableness, and uh, that's essentially why we're talking today. Is that this license has not been in operation as required by the law in all this time, and we have given you a reasonable amount of time to complete this work. I think we're past. Well, I think we are past that point now, and um, I just I, I understand you know, there's the economy. There's there's this old church that you're trying to do, and, right. and you have, and the building code things, but it doesn't all come together to explain uh, adequately to us why we have suffered what looks like now to be a pocket license um, for all these years. So, having said that, let me um, ask the uh, other commissioners also to weigh in uh, on the discussion to this point. Uh, well, I, I guess my focus in thinking about this, which I've been obviously doing since we got the legal opinion and so forth, it, it is a little bit different than whether Mr. Stewart has taken a reasonable amount of time or an unreasonable amount of time. First of all, I don't really know what the standards would be for judging that. Um, and I don't doubt that it's true, as counsel tells us, that this license would qualify as a pocket license, and <clears throat> as Section 77 says, um, if we determine that a license should be canceled, we have that power. The, the focus that I have is, what's the gain for Northampton? And, and that's where I get stuck, because it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that if we take away this license, it just vanishes. It just means there's one less premise in Northampton. And right now I'm just talking about the church because we'll get to the other building in a minute. There's one less premise in Northampton that's licensed. Now presumably, I'm assuming, you know, if we could do that and, well, no. I don't think you could even come back and apply for a license because we're over quota. So that's where I get stuck. You know, not so much with what you've done or haven't done. Although I, I, I will say, you know, whatever <coughs> very slow timeline you're working on, um, you are fixing up the building, which is also to me sort of a hospital in Hampton. I, I just don't see what we gain by taking away the license. And I read <coughs> what the license. You know, what are they called? Not the, the, the ABCC had to say they clearly don't like this idea of licenses just sitting on you. Just, I guess, the policy behind that. But I, I still don't quite see what was gained by making it. So that, that's kind of where I'm um, stuck at the moment. That being said, knowing that your license is, um, you know, hanging in the balance of being taken, why? Why the four and a half year? Well, first of all, you know, I appreciate the question, but, but it's not been a four and a half year situation where, where the license has been in question. There was never a time where the license commission said, we're revoking your license, you have to cure this, and we're giving you a certain amount of time to do so. I've merely been asked, which I've done on several occasions, I've come forward 
to the license commission to explain why there's been a delay and what we're attempting to do to fix that. We're in front of the commission now with a timeline that is legitimate. Um, and, you know, I, yes. can, I can speak to what we've done since June from what I've been in, in front of the commission okay. previous. That's since June, right? But we've called, yes. you've been calling before. Yes, it's, it's been several years yes. and so on and so forth. So why since, now the big push? Uh, there has been push previously. I mean, the big push now is to get it completed. I mean, there should be no further obstacles at this point other than getting this building permit. And once you get the building permit, you'll follow the timeline. That's, that's I guess what I'm trying to say is the first time we called you, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't part of the board, but right. when the board called you on the first time, why didn't you take the steps you're taking now to get it done? Uh, since, I mean, I can, I can reply I mean, since not, June. It's what we, I mean, I'm yeah. not trying to ask you personally. Yeah. There, were lots of, you know, there, were, there were issues that, that, that had kept us from, from moving forward at that point. But at this point, the timeline that's in front of you is legitimate timeline. And, um, and I'm happy as well, which I think would be a, a good idea, because you've heard about the project, but you've not seen what's involved in this project. We're be happy to set some time if you choose, and we'd love to have you come through and see the work that's been done, which is an expensive amount of work. Um, I think you'll get a sense and a flavor of what that project is. And, and to just follow what Commissioner Levin said, I think that, you know, I appreciate your comments. I think that this is a situation where it's an economic driver for the town. I think that no different than some of the work that we've done in some of the other entertainment establishments. When we open and people come into a show, those folks all spend time and, and money in town, and it's fairly substantial money. You know, over an eight-day period last week, over eight days, we brought over 7,000 people through town just to the Calvin Theater. And I think this facility, especially in this section of town, which has somewhat suffered from the fact that the Academy is no longer uh, showing movies twice a night, seven days a week, I think this will open up, not that it will be every night, but this will open up a new channel of, of, uh, you know, of consumers that will be in a section of town that, that I think can, can use some help. And I think that it's, again, it's a driver uh, of business into North Hampton. And I think it, you know, I'm not looking for any favors. I'm just explaining to you that, you know, we are moving forward with this. And I, I ask for some further cooperation. And we'll do whatever we need to do to make certain that from the building inspector's office to your desks that you've kept the prize based on us getting that building permit. I don't think it serves a, a good use to the city or anyone else to get rid of the license. And, you know, we've got a substantial investment in this property. It was a derelict property that had been on the market for quite some time. I had it and mothballed it because I had no thoughts as to what we were going to use it for. And then finally made what at the time was really a non-economic decision to invest substantial monies into this as we did into the Calvin and into other properties in town. You know, the license was purchased fair and square. It was on the open market. That license prior to me purchasing that license was, was a license held by Pudding Lane, which is a corporation owned by Claudio from Stiletto. That license sat idle for more years than it sat idle with me um, with no issue uh, based on a fire that took place at one of his establishments. Um, we bought the license. At the time we bought the license, it was assigned to the location immediately. You know, I've always considered, and in fact, I think to a certain degree, some ABCC folks consider pocket licenses to be those licenses which someone purchases for the potential sale or transfer that doesn't have a location. It's clear based on Attorney Seawald's um, uh, letter to, to the commission, as well as my interpretation of what the ABCC is saying, that there is a directive in terms of pocket licenses and not necessarily that a license that could have a, a location and doesn't hold it. <coughs> but there was never any intent to trade this license nor my sanitary license. The intent always was to have that license available to open the establishment. I understand you that. You can't get a license as you know in town. No, I, I know, I understand that. I understand so, and lastly, the project without the liquor license puts the entire project in peril because it has to be an establishment where we can serve the consumer. I, I, I understand all that. Let me just back up by saying um, what you um, what you have done for the city has been has been a great contribution. The contribution of cultural life of the city, the Calvin, all those things, and no one doubts that in your other establishments, Pearl Street, the Iron Horse, the Calvin, people come into the city and spend money, and that's great. That's all great. And when you have the um, plan, the project for first the church and that also for the other property on the center street. He said, this is great. Here's an experienced person who knows how, who knows his way around the business. His businesses will be, have been successful, will probably be a success. 
However, we are now at the point where we have gone um, so long without seeing any progress there with periodic updates from you, but really no activity. And again, it's beyond the point, I think, of reasonableness here. We have a situation where we appear to be ignoring a violation of, um, of chapter uh, uh, 138, section 77, um, and uh, we would be uh, not doing our duty as, as a city body if we ignored all this evidence. Now we have the, the opinion saying that these are pocket licenses if we didn't consider them such. We understand that this is a project a long time in the making, but this is too long. Uh, in my opinion, your, um, your delay is, is now at the point uh, where we can no longer ignore it, and we have to consider these uh, in violation of Chapter um, 138, Section 77, and that's it. We would, I think, be able to provide to you um, uh, a further window, and, and depending on the, the other commissioners feel about this, I would propose that you have 60 days from now to decide what you're going to do. Either these op they have to be in operation, they have to be I'm, I'm, operating with the license, or excuse me, let me finish, or transfer the license. I mean, it has been it has been beyond. A so you're you're time. not willing to allow us to get this building permit and to complete the construction based on the timeline that I've given you? Because in 60 days, Commissioner, there's no ability for us to open in 60 days. So that, that's... It's, it's, it's been, it's been I heard, years. I heard, it's been you, years. I heard you loud up there. And I've submitted, it's, it's, I've submitted it's, it's, been, it's been years. It's been years. Hold on, let me just hear from uh, Council. Uh, I, I, before the, the Commission goes into um, making any decisions, I would like to just give the record a response to uh, Commissioner Levin's concern about what this means for our campus. Uh, there is a state policy against uh, pocket licenses, and this is clearly a pocket license. Uh, the reason for the policy is that, is that this is a non-productive license. As we sit here today, it is doing nothing for the city of Northampton except for generating a fee for Mr. Sewer's uh, entity on an annual basis. There are other license, potential licensees, who would put this license to use and put this license to use immediately. This has not been four and a half years. It's been five and a half years since there's been a life, since the, there's been a building permit. And all during that time, Mr. Seward has been assuring you that he is moving forward and moving toward completion. Yet he's had no building permit. So how he possibly could be moving this building toward completion without having a building permit for five and a half years is something that I don't understand. So. Um, that is the policy of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth controls liquor policy. We don't. We carry out the state's requirements. And there is good reason to not allow license holders to sit for five and a half years, more than five and a half years now, on this license without exercising it. And so I, I just want to be clear that that is the policy. And what it does for Northampton is to allow the transfer of this license to a license holder who will exercise this license and who will be doing um, beneficial things for Northampton with this license. And if it's just going to sit, then why is this license out there? Well, I, I appreciate everything you're saying, and I, I said in my own remarks that I understand the general policy. But then, again, forgive me if I'm being too, you know, kind of bottom line minded here, but then the question is, is there really someone who is seeking this license? Because I'm not aware of that. So that would make a big difference to me. I, I'm not sure that that, that I mean that, we have before us, we're, we're charged with enforcing the law here. And, okay, and wait, I'm sorry, excuse You understand what I'm saying? So I think the bottom line for me is, is this, is this in violation here? And have we provided more than reasonable time to licensee to put this license in operation? That's that's my, my it, sense. Again, I, I'm happy to defer to counsel, but the statute says the licensing authority may cancel the license. It doesn't say 
it's a violation of this chapter. I've never, re I've never received a notice from the ABCC. The town has not on these licenses either. And as I put in front I of mean, you, we're trying to cure the issue. I, 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 we're trying I, to cure it. I, I just come back to the same thing. What is best for the city of Northampton? I, I don't want the city to be violating any laws, but I, I, I'm not sure we are. I, I don't see how we are. You also mentioned that, you know, that um, the corporation or LLC owned by um, Claudio sat on it longer. Do you have actual dates of proof? Well, that, that yeah, the, the license, the, the the license solution does. And I'm only mentioning that just because we never, we were never given a notification. You know, to be very honest, if at the time we took the license out, there was a specific language from the ABCC when the license was granted, because they knew this was a very difficult project. The ABCC had actually come and visited the site. There was never at any time from the ABCC nor the city a definitive time frame that said you must be completed by X. And when I was called in front of the commission in 2012 on several occasions, I was very open and honest about what we were attempting to do. It's the first time I've actually given a written time frame. I brought my contractor, my architect here as well, um, to back up what I'm stating. You know, it does say that you may in the language, um, but there's no requirement that the city do so. And I'm just begging for, you know, basically some, some additional time. Uh, Commissioner Rosen, I can't, if I could open in two months, believe me, I'd be the first guy to say, here's the opening date. I'd love to be open in two months. But I'm telling you that June date is realistic, assuming the building permit is issued and uh, uh, you've been given every indication that it will be based on all the communication that we've had. Um, you know, I, 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 I can't really tell you much other than that, other than I would like to dispute something that Attorney Sewell says again. You keep saying that there hasn't been a permit taken out since 2009. You're correct. You don't take building permits out every week or every month or every year. That permit was still in effect until the new, uh, until the building, um, there was an extension based on the state. So that permit was still good through 2012. Okay? So we wouldn't be pulling permits every so often. We only pull, pull a building permit. So you have an original date on the permit. You said it hasn't been a permit pulled since 2009. That's right. Right, but we wouldn't be in the building inspector's office pulling permits on a regular basis. You typically pull a permit, and that's what you pull. So, so I mean, it, it goes a long way in trying to convince the commissioners that nothing's been done for five years, but that's not been the case. So, I mean, you're welcome to be part of the walkthrough if they would like to do so, and I'm happy to show you the amount of work that's been done to date there. And you you see the time frame in terms of the balance. Of okay, I understand the time frame, but... It should have been clear when we had these discussions um, with you periodically, each of these licenses, we haven't really discussed the Center Street one, but one comes up, you know, in six months, another one comes up the other six months. So twice a year, we've had discussions with you, when are these licenses going to be in operation? And at, there were, you know, there, there were rumblings about the consideration of these as pocket licenses. You yourself addressed that. And what it means that this is not a pocket license, and you told us that. You know, however, um, you know, nothing has happened since then. So it should be clear. It's not like this is the first notice that the city could take this action if we consider. You do have you do have the opinion now of the city solicitor, but this is not the first uh, indication to you that we could say to you, use it or or transfer it or use it or. It. And, and since June, um, I've, I've given you what we've done. We've not, as I said, sat on our hands. And since June, that's the work that we've done. And, you know, I, I there's not much else I can tell you. But it, it's not, this is not the first time that you, it should have been clear to you that there, we could have reached the point we're at today where we could be saying to you. Never expected that you needed to say that you're taking the license because that was never discussed. I hear you loud and clear. I've given well, the time frame, and, and the understanding is that we've got to get it done, which is what we're going to do. It is a long time, and that's what it comes down to. And as the, as the city solicitor has pointed out, this is um, this is not doing the city any good now. And just another uh, thing, I don't know if, if you yourself know about this, if people inquire of you, um, Mr. Seawall, but I know that I have gotten several inquiries, phone calls from people saying, what is what is going on? How come we can't get this license? I have gotten those um, from time to time, um, and so I know that there is some pent-up kind of demand. As a matter of fact, the city, uh, as we're aware now, may be uh, seeking a special act of the legislature to um, 
to look for uh, another license here that would, that would go over quota. Um, and, um, <coughs> The, you know, the case is, is clear that there is there is a, a demand for this. There is a need for these licenses in Northampton. And to me, I think that there are people who would put them in operation. You appear not to be putting them in operation. You, we've told told you put them in operation, and you still haven't. And that's why we're reaching this point. Again, I, what your your businesses have been wonderful for the city. A great contribution. You know, that these two licenses sit there in apparent contravention of, of the, um, of the, of the uh, laws of the Commonwealth. And um, it's, it's just time that we took action. Mr. Uh, Seawalt, do you have any further? I have a question. Does he have the right to transfer it? Yes. And not be lost? Yes. Do you have a facility you can transfer it to and open it in 60 days? Never open within 60 days based on the time of transfer. Have to go, have to be in front of. And, and do you have a place? I, I appreciate you can transfer yeah. that license. I appreciate the question. I can't really answer that because I don't know how long it's, it would take to get that approved through. We have to get it approved. On, we have to get on the agenda here. Pending we have to approval. Get it approved. Pending and approval. Pending the approval. time that's required. Do yeah. you have a place to transfer that to in the interim while you're still going forward on this? Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I appreciate your trying to find a creative way through this. I would I would ask that the commission understand that what I'm asking for is, is a little bit more time than the two months. And it would seem counterproductive for both the commission's time and the ABCC's time for me to have to file an application for a transfer to then have to transfer it back. I'm, I'm only asking based on what the time frame is here. and. Uh, you know, I think based on the amount of time and effort. I'm just saying that there's, no, a, law, I appreci I appreci there's a law that states that you need to make that a productive yes. license. Is there a way, a will, to make that a productive Absolutely. license? Absolutely. If, if that were, if that were the law, then yes. To be no, I appreciate enlightened. that. I think that it's not, I mean, how, how it's been interpreted on, on my end is that <coughs> the city solicitor is rendering an opinion. Um, but the license commission has the ability and the purview and the you know, the wiggle room, if you will, to allow this. There's no, there's no direct mandate that's come into the city from the ABCC stating that these licenses must be revoked. So it, it's in front of the commission. I'm really asking for your help and cooperation. Commissioner Rosen, I do hear you. Loud and clear. I put a time frame in front of you that, again, I can only say it so many times that I feel is, is definitely doable based on what we understood to be the case in terms of the commitment. I can't, I, I don't, feel that, you know, talking about what went on prior to June is, is going to get us anywhere, but from, from June forward in terms of the work that we've done and the work that we expect to do, that that, that will be completed as, as noted there. So I appreciate the creative way. If I had to, I'd find a way to, to do that. I just think the more realistic approach would be to grant the extra time and, and, and allow the building inspector to update, you know, to, if the building inspector's updates, we will allow, uh, allow update the commission with, with, with that letter on a, on a regular I agree with you. That would And be I would like to show you the space because I think once you see it, you'll realize where we are in the process. The majority of all the heavy work has been done. It's really the majority of finished work that hasn't been done. And the exterior work. But the, all of the major work was completed a long time ago. So one other question then. Um, I'm not a builder. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'm being silly, but you know I see all the time on TV these people are building houses in a week. <laughs> so it's possible to get multiple GCs in there to start really going at it. We've got a great team, and they will really go at it. But being realistic, because of the, the, the you know what what you typically see on TV is, a, is a residential structure or a bar that they're doing a makeover. I mean, you know, the intent is to open a world-class facility here. It will be. Without a doubt, one of the best small performing arts event centers anywhere around. I mean, we've invested a huge amount of time and effort. Um, I, you know, I did the same thing when we opened the Calvin in 1998. This project initially was never, you know, I had never thought of this project as that from the very beginning. But when we did, uh, I worked, you know, diligently with Tom Douglas, putting together a set of plans that I think will really blow people away. Dave Claxton, who's here as well, I served as project manager. Everybody's worked really hard. My delays were my delays. What we put in front of you is a realistic time frame to get it completed. And 
I just again ask for the cooperation. I, I you know, um, I, I think this will serve the town in a, in a very big way as some of the other projects have. And uh, you know, I'm very happy that we could do this in Northampton. And I enjoy bringing people into Northampton. I've been doing it for a lot of years. I'd rather not get hung up on, on, on you know, the delays at this point, other than trying to. Is be as open and honest in front of you as I can about how this project is going to move forward. There's always people that would want licenses. You know, and one thing I would say for future um, folks that are purchasing licenses in situations where they may not have an establishment or established time frame, that maybe there, there could be a better job that the city or the ABCC would do in terms of stipulating some specific guidelines because there were no guidelines. This license, the precedent with this license that I purchased when I bought it was that it was sitting for five, I don't know how long, I think the fire was in 2002 or three, so I think it had been sitting for a number of years, four or five, six years. And then I purchased it, but there was never any indication when that purchase was made, other than when I came in front to update you. There was still no directive that we're gonna take the license away, it was an update. Can you tell me what's been going on with the license? What's been going on with the, with the construction, which I did? It was clear to me that it needed to be done, but there was never a timeline. Here to answer those questions, unless we want the license to be in operation. And that should be clear. I, I want the license to be in operation. That doesn't, that, right. that, that, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't cut it. You told us each time that you came in too. I'm going to open now. I'm going to open this time. The last, the we last said, we had said promise we had was early fall. Right. It was late we fall. Had, late we, fall. We've late had fall, several right. days. You come and give us a date. The date goes by, and then. We, we see the date go by. And, that, and in June, there are people who could put this license in operation now. Let me ask you this. Um, people, I mentioned people who have said to me, I would like this license. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish you'd sell it to me. I'm not and they said to me, the they said to me, I said, well, did you talk to him? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I'm not telling them to talk to him, but, you know, it just seems to be logical, you know, don't talk to me, talk to him, because at this point he has a license, um, and, the, and the license commission has nothing to do with, you know, who gets it uh, from, a, from a current owner. You have to talk to the current owner. We've had no so one people that's talked said to me, license. no one's ever, we've no, had no one, one has, no one has, no one has, no one has, no one's come to you and said, no. Eric, you know, no. Are you you're not using this one? I have a I have a bar I'd like to open. No one has ever come to me about purchasing any of my licenses. Never. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, I have to state that under oath. I'll put my hand. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, Commissioner Rosen, I am not here to talk about the sale of my license. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm here to talk about what I put in front of you. I'm trying to get this project and these projects finished. I'm being as open and honest as I can. It seems as if you're very interested in taking my license or in having me sell my license. I'm interested in finishing a facility that's going to be for the benefit of everybody. Without a license, it puts the entire project in peril. I'm trying to be honest with you. We can go back and forth. We've also been interested in having you open this facility. Well, this I hear you, and I'm not here. It's been years and years we've been interested in having you open right. this facility. It would but have it's been great. not been years and years since I've been in front of you with this. I explained the delays previous. In June, I set for the task as I left here June 5th. Less than a week later, we had opinions rendered. We went into the building department. We were told what was going on with that, and that's and I gave you the time frame. If I need to back that up with anything further, I have people here that can back that up. I have my builder, I have my architect that can tell you what they've done since the June 5th date. Nobody sat on their hands with that. Okay? If you can need I, to have that happen, I'm happy to do that. I have one other question. Go ahead. The right to transfer. If this board was to approve the, the June 14th or whatever June 20th, or whatever date you, you're saying, I mean, if he doesn't have hit that date, are we able to take that right to transfer and just pull the license at that point? I mean, is that something? Well, transfer and pulling the license are two different things. Canceling the license and transferring it are yeah. two different things. Right. We, we, well, I mean, I'm trying to say license. it seems like here that you know, you know, trying to you know. Well, so it seems like there has to be an angle uh, to drop it or something at the end of this. You know what I mean? There's been so many dates, so I'm trying to figure this That's out. That's why we can't work together. Yes, so that we we can't require him to transfer license. All we can do is invoke Section 77 and say we deem this to be a pocket license, thereby we will go through this. Uh, if, if, we, if we gave him a further period of time 
to either operate the license or to transfer it, and failing to do either one of those, they would revoke it. But basically, we want to see the license in operation or some given to somebody else who would put it in operation or we can revoke it. All we can do, though, is, is, is revoke it as far as taking action. Right now, the license has so been issued to... Yeah, if you can revoke it and take it and stay in the city is what you're saying. Not this one. Um, I, I'd actually, we can, we are over quota. We are over quota. And, um, is there any, is there any possibility of, of, uh, asking the ABCC to, uh, maintain this license in the city? I think you need special legislation to do that. Can I ask a couple of questions? Um, First of all, let's not forget, we're talking about two licenses, not one. So I, I'd like to, you know, I, I think we've reached a point on the old back picture where we're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth over the same ground. So it, it seems to me if we're going to do anything new, we're going to have to talk about the second license. But, but I, I am curious, and I don't know, Bill, if you have the answer to this or... You know, if it's council that has the answer to this, but let's say we came up with some arbitrary date, you know, two months from now, and by two months from now we're not satisfied, okay, and we're going to revoke the license. Is the thought that that would push people who might be interested in taking it as a transfer to come forward and you know, there's more likelihood of that. Or, or I guess I'm asking if the consequence is that we just lose the license, is that not a concern to you? Well, I mean, yeah, that's a risk and it would be a pity, but the, you know, we have, the license is, the license is lost to us now anyway. This, uh, this is not, this is not, Going anywhere? It's been it has been not in operation for for uh, a number of years, and you know at this point we seem to be uh, confronted with a, a set of facts. Is this license appears to be in violation of the, the prohibition on pocket licenses, and we're not really getting getting any any um, uh, any concrete assurance that this thing is actually ever going to be in operation. And we have had a reasonable amount of time that the licensee has had to complete the project. And I would, you know, for, for me, it has exceeded now the point of reasonableness. So that's that's what I'm thinking is, yes, we could lose the license. It would be a pity, but, you know, it wouldn't seem to matter to the city at this point since the license hasn't been in operation for so long. Well, if, if I could just say one thing to, to differ from that slightly. Look, I don't understand <laughs> what's been happening. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know, as an outsider to see a business person sit on a property for as long as Eric sat on this property, or for that matter, other properties that he has that are not operating. But, you know, we don't have the right, really. Nor even if I ask the question, would I expect a, a real answer to say, well, what kind of business strategy is this? This doesn't make any sense to me. So we just have to accept it. That's what it is, even though it doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. But I mean, a building that was in totally derelict shape is at least in better shape. I mean, it, it's not as if nothing has been happening. I, I appreciate that, and I'd like to bring you through so that you can see what's done. And I think when you go through and see it, you have a very different opinion. And Commissioner Rosen, the fact, I mean, I just want to understand what you said. You'd actually like to, you would rather give up the license because it's not being put to use than allow me some time to, to, to get this finished and use it? allowed your time. I'm just, I'm asking a, a very simple question. You would rather give up the license? And just, I mean, I'm just asking, because to me, I'm just asking for a period of time to get the, and I also stated that the, you know, the letter from the building inspector, building commissioner's office to you in terms of an update, so go from my architect, who has to report the building commissioner, who would take that letter and submit it in some form of a submittal to you so that you see on a regular basis 
the work that's been done, but I can't imagine you want to just take license to give it up. Because that, that to me, I, I must have done something really bad to you at some point. Because no. I don't understand how or why. God, that, that, you know? that's, that's out of line, really. Well, that's I out don't of line. understand it's why you want to take that. Away a license. You're, you, are, you are an exemplary businessman. I mentioned, I've said now twice all the good that you've done for the city. This has to do with licenses that have not sat and not been operational. Right. Pocket licenses. Council. I, I, just, I just want to be clear. Um, if, if you were to give Mr. Sewer a deadline to finish this and um, open this facility, and we're talking about the old Baptist Church now, um, it's really in Mr. Sewer's hand whether this uh, and whether this license uh, vanishes or not, because if he can't meet the deadline, he can transfer it. I will tell you, I will represent to you that the mayor's office has had numerous inquiries about licenses in the city. And as Mr. Rosen said, we are looking to go for a, a special act to get another license for a facility that is about to open that needs a license. So um, there is no shortage of potential licensees, and, and you know I, I just don't want this shifted to the commission that the commission is causing this license to go away. Mr. Sewer is the one who would be causing this license to go away because he has now had uh, since uh, he's had this license now for six years without operating it, and if you give him more time and he cannot fulfill that time frame. Well then, he has the option of transferring it. It is a commodity that can be transferred, and there are potential licensees to transfer it to. And right, and as I pointed out before, he still has the option to transfer it to himself to another LLC and open in a facility right away. So, given that, I have a point to make. Whether he's six months out from opening that, I gotta believe anybody else that gets this license is gonna do an upfit to a place to make it. They're gonna open it. They're gonna need six or eight months anyway, maybe four. I don't know, but right or wrong. Oh, no, there are... I mean, I'm not arguing. He's been, you know, holding on to this license for a long time, but, you know, I'm taking in, you know, my other commissioner's point of view, too, that he is bringing up this building. He's doing a great job with it, although it's been a long, long time. You know, I don't know. So, we are if the goal here is to sell this or try to transfer this, uh, you know, out, or I don't know. I know the goal is to get this to be a functioning license. That is our goal. Um, you know, so he has options. So either way. Um, there's a, there, you know, I have people that are, which we're in discussion, have been ongoing for the right tenant for Spoleto. Clearly someone at Spoleto is going to need a license. The last person that went through looked at a time frame where they wouldn't be open until June based on the work that they have to do, assuming they sign a lease by January 1st. And so, you know, unless someone physically has a bar that is turnkey and ready to go and needs a license, Again, appreciate the comment. It is going to take some time. I'm just asking for some time to get this completed. You know, we'll be held to the fire based on letters that we'll submit monthly, as I had stated in that time frame to you, and uh, I have no reason to believe that we won't get this completed. I hate to uh, be the type, you know, to, to push things further along than they've actually been, but I don't feel like I would be ready to make uh, any kind of decision on this, especially with in light of some of the things I didn't know about, you know, um, I would want to do a little more research myself personally, but you know, I, I, I need to catch up on this. I wasn't here for the first parts of this or whenever it all started. And quite honestly, there's quite a, a bit to uh, read and catch up on, but um, I wouldn't mind touring that place as well, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and seeing the action. I mean, I've talked to the building inspector as well. I would like to see some of that. We have, we have, we do have, um, we're asked to, to review things, you know, according to, we're enforcing the law. This is chapter 108, and we now have an opinion from, from the, from the city solicitor that, that points to, uh, action we can take, and that, that may be what we need in order to render a decision here. Let, let me, let me stop right now. Let's, Let's talk for a second about 24 Center Street. Um, um, this this one, um, the last we heard, you were going to open this in early fall. Yes. 
and the police station was construction somehow had held you up there. I'm not sure um, uh, where that is at, but it's clearly it's getting past early fall, and there's no sign that that license would be in operation either. So tell that us that license will be hopefully in operation. That license, unfortunately, is a seasonal license. We've not moved forward yet to extend that to a, an annual license, which we have the ability to do. But that license will be in operation as soon as the building permit is going to be pulled. That license will be in operation within 60 days. So if you would so grant me that extension, we will be in operation with that facility within that time frame. 60 days from today, would be uh, January 6th. Yes. And would you? Um, it is a seasonal license. You yes, it is. And you know from the special act that you have the right to convert that yes, to an all annual. Right. And uh, how long would that take, the conversion there? Do you know? Yeah. We have not sent it to the ABCC, mm -hmm. correct? Right. We're not certain we're going to convert. We may keep that seasonal. We're not certain we're going to convert that. So, but the establishment will be open. That's a ticket office that we're opening. That's going to be open. So, we're not certain we're going to convert that. Yeah. However, a seasonal license would have to shut off on January 15th and not be able to operate again until so, April 1st, right? Which we're aware of. But that facility is going to be open as a, as an establishment, not just for the consumption of alcohol. So I haven't determined whether or not we're going to extend that as an annual license yet. But we are going to open that facility as part of the extension of the picketing office or um, a whole array of other. That that plan hasn't changed from what I discussed. Like we said early fall, so it's going to be. Before early winter, but that will be over. And there's a building permit that is being pulled as we discuss this. It's a four-week project to finish that. What is that? That was a, that was formerly um, a, a um, ice cream type establishment that was run there, and so we're refinishing all the mechanicals. Basically, there we're just refinishing the interior, but because it's looked at as a new establishment, we have to follow certain construction control construction guidelines. And, we're just going to reshell out the space with some new interior, and then we're going to move our equipment in. It's, it's a very, very basic build out. We just been delayed on that. had nothing to do with the delay, the types of delays with the church. This was supposed to be opened by October 1st, so we're delayed by a few months. <coughs> Once that building permit is in place, all of the rest of what we're doing will happen within four to six weeks. So the 60 day so time frame on that. I both of your building permits should be issued by the next time we have our meeting. Right? Yes, they should be. They should be, hopefully. I mean, I think it's going to take the building department. I don't know when the next meeting is, and I can't speak for the building commissioner, but um, I know after discussions with my project manager and with Tom Douglas that um, we're hoping to have everything into the building commissioner by the end of next week on the church, and that that should take the city seven weeks to, to do their review and issue a permit. As soon as they issue a permit, we go. We're lined up with what we have to do on the church in terms of getting that completed. And I'm happy to provide you with letters as soon as that has been done in terms of the uh, building permit. Um, I'm happy to provide a copy of that and a letter to Mary's office so that you know that that's been done. As well as a permit for 28, 26, 28 Center Street will also have a copy of Mary's so she can notify you that that's been done. And I am aware that that license, with that renewal is, is, I believe, a March 15th date for the seasonal um, the March meeting. So that establishment will be open long before the renewal date on the seasonal license. Am I correct that if um, Mr. Sewer were to transfer that seasonal license to someone else, that that person could um, turn it into a you know uh, annual full alcohol license? It doesn't have to be a ten minutes. The um, the plan for twenty four Center Street is um, is to serve um, all alcohol. Yes. Yes, and I may in fact come back in front of you in December once the permit's been pulled and the work's been done and we may in fact get the ball rolling to convert that and just have it that hasn't been part of it this discussion today, but we may in fact come in front of you to convert, to have a conversion um, application that would go in front of the ABCC for, a, um, you know, in front of you and then the ABCC to, to convert that. But, but right now I just wanted to issue the time frame of when that project is going to be completed and, and we'll be, you know, we'll be operational with that establishment prior to the next, um, the, 
prior to that license coming in front of you again for renewal. So the um, so the license could be in operation within the 60 days. Yes. Time. All right. Um, then um, I think um, we've had um, a full discussion of these two licenses and where they stand. Um, we've heard from we've heard from uh, the city solicitor. Uh, um, his opinion of, of these licenses and also what our powers are here. Uh, I've stated in my opinion um, that these, um, you know, I believe that uh, these are pocket licenses as uh, Mr. Seawald has stated, and that the um, uh, that giving the licensee an additional 60 days on each of them to either put them in operation or um, or or otherwise, you know, uh, convey them to somebody who will uh, is uh, is reasonable given the uh, time frame that he's already had in order to put these into operation. So um, I would like to uh, I would like to make a motion myself from the chair that we offer um, Mr. Seward an additional 60 days on each of these licenses to have them in operation um, or have them conveyed to somebody who uh, somebody else in that time frame uh, or else we will um, uh, we will uh, revoke them uh, as, a, as pocket licenses so I have made that motion and I'd ask the first the second for purposes of discussion I'll second it for purposes of discussion and then Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, as, as I think I made clear, I mean, my main concern is to think about what to the best advantage of Northampton, and I was concerned about the possibility of losing two licenses, possibly both of them over the border, right? And we can just the all annual. Just, just the Baptist Church. Okay. Um, fine. Well, that's good to know. Uh, so I'm learning, you know, like my fellow commissioner, I'm learning new things all the time. Um, I feel of the two properties, I have quite different feelings. Uh, the property on Center Street, it seems to me, could have easily been finished ages ago. And so if there's any license that I feel has been sat on, it's that license. And knowing that there are other um, businesses that would be interested in an all alcohol license and knowing that this seasonal license, if it were transferred to someone else, could be converted to an all alcohol license. Uh, an annual alcohol license. I would think that that's the license that to me makes the most sense to be very strict about. Um, as far as the old Baptist church goes, uh, I guess I've made myself clear. I, I, I don't, I mean, obviously it's been a very long time. Maybe it even qualifies in, as an unreasonable period of time. But it's a huge project, and I do think it's a benefit to the city to have that facility up and running. And I'm less inclined to put a tight limit on that. I'd like to see that perhaps go forward and actually end up being an operating facility. So that's kind of where I, I, I guess if you want me to be more concrete, in terms of your motion, I don't have a problem with the Center Street location. The motion you made, it could be the Center Street location. I'm not sure I'm ready to do the same for the old Baptist Church. Right. I agree with the Center Street. Um, <clears throat> the church, however, you know, I'm just being logical. There's, you know, he's got options. So, I don't know, to force the, uh, 
uh, a loss of a license. It's not going to be a loss of a license. And my um, my logic tells me it's just going to transfer it to something else and keep it in the museum. So, like I said, I'm not ready for that. I want to look into that more um, as far as the church goes. But I would agree with the, uh, the 60 day. I would say it would be certainly, you know, uh, stipulations on the building permit for that church and then Sorry, uh, say more about the church. Um, in other words, with the building permit, you know, I don't, um, I guess I don't understand without talking to one of the building commissioners what's you know, involved in taking so long to get a building permit. That amount of line, um, that amount of time to put something in the works anyway. Um, quite honestly, I guess. He's brought up valid points that we've been, I don't know, since I've been here, we've brought him in once and he's given us a, yeah, I'm going to get it done. You know, uh, there's opinions and there's holding the, upholding the law, so I want to look more into that too. Um, so, if you're Center Street, one I agree with, but um, stay along the, uh, the church right now. All right, well, um, I move that we, um, that we have both of these licenses considered um, uh, under, that, under that deadline of 60 days. Um, so, uh, since we have that motion on the floor, let me. Uh, Put it to the vote well, hold on right a now. second. Um, I'm not aware of what parliamentary procedure, but if I were to make an uh, amendment to the motion, can I do that? Sure. Okay. okay. Well, I would vote that. I mean, I would suggest that we separate the two and have a vote on um, that motion. That
the other item then would be the license uh, 298 Main Street, um, the, uh, the non-seasonal all-alcohol license. Um, again, the, uh, the motion is that this has um, a 60-day time period for the licensee to uh, show us that the license is in operation or has been conveyed to somebody else. Otherwise, the commission will revoke the license. All in favor say aye. Aye. All, all opposed say nay. 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 Okay. Then, um, given that um, we don't want to impose a 60-day uh, limit on the um, on the Baptist Church license, um, the uh, licensee has submitted this timeline. Um, it's hard to. Um, we are at. Um, Essentially, we're beginning in November now, and um, he is uh, saying that he has these uh, building permit applications and other work to commence on the application on the uh, on the building itself, uh, and that he projects a soft opening um, uh, sometime in the week of June 14th to the 21st. So, are you uh, at this point inclined to? Uh, to hold him to that date, since we won't hold him to a 60-day date. The date in the letter? The date in the timeline that he has submitted yeah. to us. So I'm going to ask for my date. Uh, I'm more inclined to say that we would like to see proof by the next meeting, which is yeah. December, whatever it is, that the building permit has been issued and uh, progress has restarted. And I think we can see what happens over I agree with that with um, many, you know, with stipulations on the timeline. So, you know, maybe you can require an update every single meeting until it opens. You know, I don't care if it's five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever, but I put in there that I'd be happy to update monthly whether that means you coming to the meetings and have a letter, so however you guys uh, would suggest that be done out. Happy to by that. When you say soft opening, uh, what do you mean by that? Similar to what we did with the Calvin. The first, first show that we did with Calvin was basically by invite for the most part. Then we made some tickets available and we went into our, our full week. Mm -hmm. I haven't, other than looked at who we want to have in for the first week, I haven't made any final commitments in terms of contracts yet, but we have about, well, we have a number of people that want to play the facility during our opening week. I have to decide how I'm going to do that. There'll be an initial soft opening and then we'll go into hard shows and events. What's your current business plan then, assuming that you're able to um, get this thing going? Is it to be open for the service of alcohol? Same as I had. I have, the business plan has not changed from when I made my initial submission and was granted the license. Could you repeat it then for, for yeah, the it's, it's going to be an event driven building, so we're going to have an assortment of events. Um, Similar to what we do at our other facilities, there'll be concerts, there'll be lectures, it'll be used by folks for record purposes, marriage. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. I think it'll have multiple uses. Uh, the plan is fairly open in terms of being able to rent to people who want to use the facility and, and driving our own events through there. We know we can do a certain amount of events there. And it'll still allow for a lot of open days that we would rent the facility. Smith College has inquired, other folks have inquired, lots of uh, party rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, meetings, we have a separate meeting room there. We might show film again. We're trying to figure out whether we're going to do that. Um, all of the things I put in the initial application it, it is pretty much exact as we're going to follow for plan. So could you could you estimate how many days no. the service of alcohol will be provided? No, quite a few, but I can't I, I could estimate at this point because we haven't really started doing it. But it'll be quite a few days. Similar to the other facilities, I mean, I could, could give you an idea that the Iron Horse is used to be open seven days a week, it depends on our schedule, but it's typically five to seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Pearl Street is typically anywhere from 90 to 120 days a year. But I can't really estimate this because we're not 100% certain of how many events we're going to do there, but it'll be a substantial number of days. And the bar at the Calvin? Well, I, I don't understand some of the things that have been written. I mean, the bar at the Calvin is open when the Calvin is open. Mm -hmm. It's open. Every, 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 every show, day, every show the calendar is open, the bar is open. Mr. Kirby decided to write some kind of article that obviously some people have read, but 
when the bar there was open, but I, it was, it was I, licensed I, I in that manner, but the bar is open when the facility is open. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And um, how many days is the Calvin open generally? I guess following from what you're saying, uh, you're saying it's event driven only, so the doors could be shut for 45 days at a time and there would be not one drink served. I don't think that's the case. I mean, I think we'll ultimately probably decide to utilize some of it as we have in the past. The Calvin Bar used to be open on a more regular basis and just shows. But I think once we get the facility to the point where we have made some final decisions as to the full operations, I mean, I know right now that we're going to be driven by specific events and catering. Similar to the garden. I mean, I guess I would use the garden house as an example. I can't tell you how many days they're open. The city granted them a license and, and they're doing events on a regular basis or weekly basis, um, I don't know how many days a week, but I think we'll be that and more because we'll be doing specific concerts as well as other events, but um, you know the goal is to operate it on a very regular basis. I'd love to be able to stay open five days a week there. That would be the ultimate goal. I just I can't stand in front of you as a public record and give you an exact amount of dates because I just don't, I don't know yet, but I know we'll be heavily driven by, by events on our calendar. And then we'll fill in days with rentals and other parties. And I'm sure Smith College will use it for certain things as they've acquired repeatedly. There'll be a lot of weddings there because it's going to be a non-denominational church type setting upstairs with a banquet facility on the lower level. And there's an extreme amount of inquiries in terms of getting married there. Um, and that's why it pains me to not have the facility completed because it's costing us. Besides all of these fees, it's costing us a lot of money to not be bringing those revenues in. My sense is there'll be weekly events, and we hope to be four or five days a week there. That's the goal. Thanks, it's sir. a very expensive facility. If I don't do that, yeah. you know, we're not going to be making much money. Is there food going to be served, or is it going to be catered? We have a catered. We have a, what we're building is a catering type kitchen, but we'll probably, for all of our events, we'll serve um, a dinner similar to what we do at the Iron Horse. The Iron Horse kitchen is open every time there's a there's a show. We're not open to the general public when there's not a show. We'll more than likely do that same type of, uh, or have the same type of arrangement at the church. So anytime there's an event or a show, we'll have the kitchen open. And again, you know, what I'd like, because I think it would help for the next meeting, we'll, we'll have in front of you, hopefully, the, the building permit and update for the next meeting, but I would like if there's a way, if any, if any of you would like to tour the facility, I think it would help you just with understanding and understanding. Happy to take the time where Tom, the project manager, did take, uh, take, take the time to give you a full walkthrough. Uh, I think it would, would well serve you to understand what the facility is rather than just talk about it in the room. And it's two minutes from here. It's a good walk. I, I'd be happy to take it. Great. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, June. We've heard other dates from you. You will pardon, pardon my skepticism. Okay. June. What are you saying then? That, that you will in fact open in June? I put it in the letter. We're going to do our very best to open by those days, and we're going to keep you up to date every month as you would request, whether we coming in front of you each month, which I'm happy to do, or to put a letter from the building inspector's office or our architect's office, um, because that's a control, controlled construction job. We have to update them. I'm happy to update you on a regular basis so you know that this is this happening. Can I do you know? Uh, do we know has the, has um, the building commissioner been in this building lately? Does he have any any? Uh, I uh, I sent an email to the building uh, commissioner was yesterday, and he responded saying that uh, only that uh, the day before. He had seen uh, the architect, and I believe the general contractor came and talked to him. Uh, I wasn't under the impression that he had been in the building. These guys, so, I mean, these guys are here if you'd like them to answer because they, they can tell you when they'll talk to him. The, um, so, the, so this flurry of activity taken place since your opinion was issued? Oh, yes. So, as I understand it, it's been since, uh, since my opinion has been issued and, and given to Mr. Stewart. Uh, when I spoke to the building commissioner before issuing this opinion, uh, it was uh, nothing. Uh, my impression from the building commissioner was that he yeah, had, had a heard, conversation about this. So. He hadn't heard from him at that time. Mm -hmm. Can I just say, since I was the person who initially expressed 
there was concern about putting a 60-day deadline on the Main Street Baptist Church. If um, we're looking for an alternative approach, my suggestion would be not to have anything to do with June because right now, with all the deference, that's just so much work. I mean, it could happen, it could not happen. There's no way of knowing. It's way off in the future. I would say that we can make sure that the next step is taken, which is to say that the building permits have been issued by our December meeting. We can inform Mr. Score if he hasn't already picked it up. I have to be smart enough that he has. That, you know, even the issuance of the building permit in no way, shape, or form removes our authority to cancel this license as a pocket license. And that we will continue to hear month by month what's happening. And if at any point we feel that it's not moving in a serious way, we can revisit the issue. I mean, there's no reason to commit ourselves right now to a date, whatever it is, eight months out, that may or may not come to pass. Um, I mean, we're not waiving our right to, I just, to cancel. I just, I just, we're not waiving our right to cancel the permit. We're simply saying we're not ready to do it in two months. I disagree. I think a, a hard deadline. Um, Mr. Sewer himself has said, "Geez, I didn't know you were about to to um, uh, pull up the rug out from under me." I think a hard deadline is in fact just what uh, we need here. Otherwise, we will continue to have. A, uh, a license not in operation into the future. It's, um, it focuses the mind to have a deadline, and I think that, that that's, uh, this is certainly one case where, where it's appropriate. No, no, I'm in favor of having a deadline. I don't want the deadline to be not until June. I don't want to say right now. Then that's just that not mutually we're stuck exclusive. until June. That doesn't make sense. They're not mutually exclusive. Okay. You could uh -huh. uh, impose a June deadline and require uh, the building permit on the next month right. and monthly update and uh, the burden would be on Mr. Seward to come back to you to extend that deadline if he has good cause to extend the deadline and that's what you find. But I, I do agree with Mr. Rosen that, uh, and, and every lawyer knows this, that there's nothing like a deadline to get, get the people to do what they need to do. I was in favor of a deadline as long as we're not, our hands are not tied until then. If we decide in March that nothing's happening, I wouldn't be able to act in March. Oh, oh yes, I see what you mean. And, no, we can say that um, we can take we can take a, another motion here that this, in fact, this license needs to be in operation by um, by June 20, 21st, and um, otherwise we will we will uh, we will take steps to revoke it. But we could um, also uh, find that nothing has been done and that we revisit our deadline previously imposed. I don't see any problem with our being able to do that. May I suggest an approach would be to require Mrs. Sewer uh, to have a license by a uh, permit by a date certain and that he proceed to, to construction expeditiously and continuously and that he open no later than June 21st. And at any point along the way, if the commission were to find that he was not proceeding expeditiously okay. and continuously, you would have a right to revoke the license. I'll, I'll put that in the form of the motion. That's pretty and much where I would go. Um, I was going to suggest just by our July meeting. If you want to make that motion. Well, wait a second. Um, I just figured that, you know, unlike all the ideas of, of uh, going all the way through and having the opportunity whenever, but by our July meeting, if it's not up and running and hasn't been by that last meeting, we can done. We can pull it. Well, I mean, we would obviously yeah. have to meet in order to, right. to do that. Yeah. So, yes, that goes without saying. But again, your, uh, how does that, how does that be? What, what Mr. Seawald said? Well, we're required to permit by a big certain production expeditiously and Continuously. Uh, or the right to revoke the prior. Yeah, okay. can, can I, I, I mean, I don't think it should just be dates. I, I, just, I well, think we're I, on I the same date. Yeah, no, 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 I understand. Yeah. The date that we're talking about is by our next December meeting. 
we, in other words, the motion is that we need to see evidence that there's a building permit for this project by our December meeting. We need to hear from Mr. Sewer or someone on his behalf. Every month thereafter, that construction is proceeding uh, expeditiously. Uh, we need to know that <coughs> the facility is on target to open by June 21st, and if at any point along the way it seems that that's not happening, we retain our right to cancel the permit. At any point, you know you. All right, is that a motion? Yes. I will second that motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Then, um, your license at uh, 268 Main Street is to be in operation by June 21st. Mm -hmm. We will require um, the periodic updates. And if at any time um, if there's something that's not happening, mm -hmm. you could say, you know, it's not happening. We're, we're, we're terminating earlier than June. Mm -hmm. We have uh, so decided. So we're, uh, uh, we're looking in for your next um, report to us with building permit and our December meeting. December meeting. And I would also um, ask um, at some point uh, for the building commissioner to give us his opinion on this project as well. We may or may not have him in for that meeting. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, we may we may we may confer with him. And is there a way to ask for sort of, uh, you to view this project prior to the next meeting as well? So that might give you a better indication of what works they've done. I suggest as opposed to not understanding the same for um, that we're not to bring it through. Okay. Ten minutes. The um you know, the building commissioner could tell me, um, I think, what I need to know as far as whether or not this thing's on track. That's really all I care about this license be in operation. Is this building ready to uh, to open? It will be ready to open. What's your opinion? I, I couldn't judge that from looking at a uh, construction site, but I think that you could. So I'll I will rely on this opinion. Okay. It's an application for short term one malt license trustees for a library. Uh, uh, the event is on December 14th. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry you had to wait so long. Uh, please tell us about this event. Um, we're having a reception for our art exhibit in the Hosmer Gallery. I see that the server's information, insurance information has been provided. Everything seems to be in order, and you're asking for a uh, fee waiver. Um, I have no other questions. Do you have any questions? No, I think this was carried over from last week. Yeah, because yeah. I got confused about what the was. Okay. I, I make a motion that we go oh, in West Bryant. I make a motion that we approve the application for the short term plan with the license for December 14th. Sorry. With a fee waiver. All those in favor? Oh. Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, next item, uh, application for short-term wine and malt liquor licenses. We have two events from the Academy of Music, one for December uh, 20th and one for November 30th. Uh, Allison, hi. Tell us what this is about. Hi. Um, I'm Allison Clayman, the first events manager at the Academy of Music. Um, these are two additional events that have come up in our fall schedule. Um, appropriate for one year service at our concession stand, which is pre-show and intermission service. And um, we're also requesting a fee waiver, and do we have any questions for the commission? That's a commission. Um, I'll move that we approve the two application. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Thank you. 
I think I'm ready to application for a short term line and with the license service and design um, Sunday, December 1st. I, um, identify yourself for the record, please. Good morning, John Pico, General Manager at Silverscape Design. Okay. Could you tell us about your event? Um, it's something we do every year, every weekend, and on Sunday, uh, we have to let on with Mike Berger campaign while our customers are shopping. And I see that you've designated um, the uh, proceeds, if any, to the United Way campaign. Yes. yes. And that you have submitted uh, server and insurance information. Cert and insurance information, yeah. Uh, any questions? No. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve Clippers Gate to join this application for short term and more. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Item number nine application for a new confidential license in the Z Incorporated DBA Sicilian Campaign Chowder House. At one round house plaza. Hi, how are you? Find yourself for the record. My name is Nicholas Arnold. I'm representing Peter Lang Woods this evening. And uh, tell us what your uh, this is in the round house. Yes, sir, right down below. How about that? That's it. No address. A small 1200 square foot with fast guy go eateries. Um, you want to know what I'm on your touch? Not particularly, just okay. um, you have. Uh, they got uh, what you need from the Board of Health, I see, um, and uh, there's a certificate that's been applied for, and we have a signature of the Board of Health Director, and the building commissioner has uh, given you uh, a need. Um, do you have any questions for Mr. Lightwood? Is, is this the same name as the place? Yes, we have one in half the other, and we also have one in Greek Hill as well. Uh -huh. okay. Wow. Three, three, six. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. I'll take a motion on this one. Uh, I move that we uh, accept the application, uh, approve the application for the Cafe and Chatter House. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Item number 10, application for short term wine and malt license, signature sounds, DB in Parlor Room, 32 Masonic Street. Also, sorry you had to wait so long. Um, Saturday, November 23rd, 12 to 8. You are waiting for insurance information, health service information. You are um, designated the International Language Institute for any proceeds from this. Uh, tell us a bit about your event. This is wine and malt. Yeah, the event uh, will be on a Saturday. We've um, uh, we have 18 local crafters uh, that are going to come for the weekend and uh, display and sell there during bad weekend. And uh, we're going to have a reception uh, during the day and serve. Have a bar. Have fair one. Okay. I have our insurance. Give that to Mary. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, maybe I'm being very dumb, but where is the part of the room? Uh, it's on 32 Masonic. Uh, it's uh, Wood, you know, Woodstar Cafe. Yeah. So if you're at Woodstar and you're heading towards Main Street, it's the next building. It used to be, um, well, it was Hamlin Furniture originally, and then it was a, a somatic institute. Um, oh, the place up the stairs? Up the stairs. Well, yeah, we do have a few yeah, stairs. Yeah, there's like stairs. Yeah, it's kind of set back a little bit. Um, it's just Woodstar driveway. So it's not operating now as any kind of a... The parlor room is, yeah. We, we do um, performances there. Um, I didn't even know. Yeah, we knew. Yeah, we knew. We just started. It's, it's Sanctuary Sounds is a record label. Right. And um, so uh, we moved from Waitley uh, into Northampton last year and we do two or three nights a week of concerts. and. Mm -hmm. But, but there's no food service? We just do kind of like baked goods and just simple kind of water. Yeah, so we don't, so it's just kind of, we have an entertainment license, but we don't have a liquor license. Do they need to come and sip what? Mm -hmm. Through the mayor's office? Through the mayor's office. Because they're not a, uh, a restaurant. restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we operate kind of like a... Okay, great. I mean... So I do, I, okay, in that case, I, I actually do have a question. So. Um, 
when you have this event between 12 and 8, mm -hmm. at which you're going to be serving uh, wine and beer, is there going to be any food available? Uh, yeah, so we feel the International Language Institute is going to also um, have, you know, like a table. Yeah, like a table cookies and, and, and um, light snacks and stuff for the folks that are coming through. Okay, I just don't like people drinking. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, they're going to they're gonna have a, I think Woodstar Cafe too is going to donate. I mean, they're, they're working on kind of getting some donations from some local restaurants and using it as a fundraiser for their program. And that's not an issue to give a, a, a wine and malt temporary short-term license to a facility that's not set up as the normal. No, no, we've done this. No, no, we've done it for fairs and festivals. Gotcha. Okay, all right. I just wanted Other to get that clear. Other things, you know, one-off one events. So. Okay. I, I have no further thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have went on November 23rd. No, it sounds great. I just, I don't want people, you know, drinking it. Not being able to eat a pretzel or something. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll make a motion that we approve this application for our short term. I'll, I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of the uh, regular wine and beer licenses. Uh, it just took forever, and it went for two sessions for the legislature because a legislator in the eastern part of the state had some phone to pick with the ABCC about licenses in his district, and so we held up everything to do with special act. It, this is like these are like all those home rule things, and you see them from time to time. Bills that pass legislation have special allowing something, a liquor license or something related to a liquor license, is it by a special act. And there's always a possibility that this could get held up for quite a while, like the original line of malt conversion bill was back when we did it in 2000. We finally got it in 2004. But it kicked around the, the state house for a while. So it's not a foregone conclusion that this would pass or pass speedily. So can I ask a question? Why would any businessman or woman in their right mind get a GC, sign the contracts, and start a foundation on a place that they might not be able to get a license to run? We're talking about the hotel on concert, right? right? I mean, it's already under No, 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 he's, he's confident. He's confident. I'm just saying it's not certain. <laughs> yeah. It's just not certain. None of this makes any sense. Well, to me. I mean, why, well, I know, that, look, Eric doesn't, I mean, forget about the old Baptist church, who knows what that's about, but, I mean, that thing on Center Street, it's like nothing, he doesn't need that, why doesn't he just transfer the license? What's stopping him? I don't know that it's, it's our place, you know, a public meeting like this to talk about his motivations. Yeah, we all have opinions. Yes, we, but well, here, it, <laughs> it, this is a public meeting. We have, no, but I mean, we have, we have, he's held on to these two licenses without them being in operation. And he gave repeated assurances to the commission that he was going to put them in operation soon. And that's why I like the idea so, of saying the June 21st drop dead. Plus, we also have the option. But you know, now, if you want to talk about kicking ourselves, we should have implemented that on the last time we pulled it. So if you have until X before time, but I go through this all done. So you mean when we had him in June fifth? When we had him in we should have gave him a drop that we Right. Right. Um I don't know. But at that point we also thought there was no no possible transference. No, no, no. That, that was, there's always a possibility. You can sell a license. Oh, okay. if, if a person, normally a person who has a liquor license has a thing of value, and if they're, if, you know, it's burning a hole in their pocket unless they can generate some revenue from it. So if their project gets hung up, generally what you see is that they say, I can't pull this off, and they sell the license to somebody right. who has more capitalization or something, whatever, whatever's yeah, going on. Exactly. We clearly have a, another case here with the holder of these two licenses. But if he were, but if he were to um, have to transfer, sell this license that he's got at the Baptist Church, yes, it could go to Mansur for the Cotton Street thing. And if we had given him 60 days as opposed to um, uh, seven months, no, I'm sorry, uh, eight months, um, you know. Perhaps he would have been moved to yeah, do I that. Understand. And I can get it to you later, you know, with the opinions of um, fairness, and, and I don't have all the information to be just jumping on board like that. You know, and that's why you know, we did what we did, I guess. But. Well, he has been here, but he has been. It goes back a ways. He does. Yeah. We we he's had these licenses. We've had him in. He's. I think the record would show that he came in. Originally in 2008 on this project, 2009, 2010, 2011, each year we've seen him at least once when these licenses came up for renewal. Do you, do you remember? I agree. There's nothing unfair about it. I mean, he, he, he can say all he wants that he didn't realize this was coming. But he, I mean, anyone. Well, that's the point I was and, making. Anyone with their eyes open knew it was coming. But what I keep saying is the Center Street thing is that's the license to get rid of. There's also, nothing there. I mean, you're also dealing with a businessman that has the capability of keeping that license by transferring. You're not going to take it away from Eric. I mean, that's what I tried to convey. 
I don't understand. Well, no, no, no. I mean to another LLC if I were working in 30 days. We're, we're our interest here, our interest as a body here, is that the, um, the license, not the pocket license, the record right. license right. truly issued, right. be in operation in a reasonable time frame. We have this, and I, my, my thinking on offering him the 60 days was to say, say you, you came and told us things which, and clearly you weren't able of pulling off. Whether or not you knew you weren't able to pull off. I would agree with that. Whether or not you knew, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. I'm not going to say that. But he told us repeatedly, this is coming, and this is coming, and it never came. So I thought 60 days was a reasonable period for him to transfer license. And if he said, if he said, well, I'm not going to sell the license, and we revoke it, um, well, he would go to the ABCC clearly, and appeal, yeah. or sue the city or whatever, perhaps. But I can't say that either. But he clearly took advantage of the lenience of the commission. All right. Well, whether or not we were continue to be lenient today is, is, you know, something that, you know, he may he may have an opinion on. But clearly, the the um, the city's interest is for these licenses to be in operation. That's why we're going right. for a. Um, a special act. Mm. We wouldn't have to do this necessarily if other things had, had happened. So, however, we may go through the special act. We may have a hotel on Collins Street. We may, in fact, have a, a wedding palace or whatever it is on, on uh, the old Baptist church. You know, it's, well, you know, I if, he, I if he can do this. But that was my question is, you know, will this be, will this be, Will this place actually be in operation, or will it be, you know, will it be having a couple of events and this or that? Right. He doesn't have to come to us, of course, for permits for those things. He held a liquor license. Correct. Right. So he could have, he could, he could have it, he could have it be dark, you know, 29 out of 30 days every month. And that's what I asked him. And, you know, and, and granted, he can say whatever he wants, but that's why I kind of want to, you know, in our next couple of meetings, maybe. We always have that stipulation. I don't know. Do you, do you, do you know? If he if he has if he has if the place if he we, goes if he goes there for three months, do we have the right to say hey? Give I don't know. Place. I would ask counsel for an opinion on that. I would also I would and I would actually ask for an extensive opinion on that from case law and even asking the ABCC for their opinion on, on that because if he had this thing and it was operating one day a month at most or something like that, which is very possible. The Calvin is, doesn't operate that much. It's often not open. Uh, I've been to events at the Calvin uh, when the bar is open. Um, so if this thing is uh, not operating, um, you know, I think we should see the, the advice you of know. counsel. Well, I think the same thing applies to whatever he's going to get. I mean, he was talking about something very odd, selling the kicker when the facility in Center Street, I don't know where that came from, but, you know, if he opened something there that has nothing to do with the service of alcohol, it's still a pocket license. Right, of course. So, so that's why I'd like to rely on, on concrete achievement here for, for, for the notice that comes to us that He's uh, sold it to somebody else. Yeah, he has to sell. No, he's got a course of action. He has to take. Yes, yeah. so and he could he could say, I will neither operate this thing nor sell it, and then and then we have to revoke it. And yes, we could lose license. That was that was to answer your question. Yeah, but let me ask then, you this: We're sitting here going for a special act, so we lose Eric Shore's license. Can we go for a special act again? It's a pain. It's, yeah. This is this is this is this is a um, this, this is this is not easily done. Mm. Um, takes takes time and city resources to do this. Um, it runs into and it's what I did for a living for years. You know the sort of the process of legislation in the state house, and um, you can never tell. Like I said, the original right. act. Was held up because somebody in where was it Clinton or Milford or 
Milton or some damn place, you know, was not letting any of these special home rule petitions go through for any municipality until he got, you know, satisfaction because he had been, um, he had been screwed or something like that. So something he would kind of get for his history. People like that should be thrown out often. Well, whatever. So yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, know, it's a sausage thing. Yes. So, um, so yeah, we could, but I don't think we necessarily do that. The, um, so, I take it that, we don't have to vote on this, I take it we're, um, we're okay with the city council pursuing special action? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Are we up to the minutes? Uh, we are up to the minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the October 1st minutes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, um, Google certification estimated resident population, 28,549. Thank you. I'll Yes, notice of violation hearing, it's Tully's again. What this is, um, you've got the thing there in your packet, what happened there? The DJ. Right. Um, we have, um, we have the Mr. St. Ange in, remember, and we went through it. We, you know, we made it clear exactly what was intended. We, we said no DJ based on the, um, um, uh, we said no DJ based on the uh, recommendation of the police Are you chief. For a meeting? Yes. What meeting? Um, the one on the liquor licenses. Yes. This is where I tell is, 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 is it six or six thirty? No, no, no. It was at four. four. Was that four? Well, we're still having it. We're still having Oh, you are? Yes. Do you have something to say? No. Okay. No, I was just curious about the process. Okay. Uh, are you discussing that? You can or see not? the very, very dregs of it right now. If you like. <laughs> what? You can see the dregs of it if you like. I'll stick for a while. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we had a um, uh, we had a pretty frank discussion with Mr. Sainaj. Uh, we we made it clear to the license holder himself at the previous meeting, no DJ. So we said that we took the uh, advice of the police department that. That the entertainment license cleaning DJ was causing problems and right. threats to public safety. So we made our ruling, and we did. We explained we, our ruling. And went on clarification too, because you know, financial got something to add. Okay. So, so uh, they had a uh, event. Not only did it have a DJ, but it was advertised as a DJ, and it was after the meeting that we had with Mr. Sinaj. So. Um, we, as a body, uh, when people tell us they're going to open their establishment for the service of alcohol and don't do it, or when they tell us that they will comply with, you know, or that they understand our restriction on their entertainment license and then go ahead and do it, I think we as a body, we need to um, take notice of this. So that's why we're having a violation hearing, uh, a violation of the, of the new terms of the, liquor li of the entertainment license on December 4th. So, um, Not very bright. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, well, there is clarification of that. There is clarification. When Chief was sitting here and we were talking about mm -hmm. DJs, we were talking about DJs that are specific DJs in a booth um, on the Tully O'Reilly's side, and then we had testimony from either the manager or one of the gentlemen that said 
in some of their live shows, they do use this equipment. Mm -hmm. And we did say okay to that point of view with that. So they, that they use some of this, but they're singing along with it, and so on and so forth on the, and on the 11th yeah. side. Yeah. And so... There's no sides here. There's only yeah. one premise. Well, we can't, we you're, can't, right, we you're right, you're right. There's, there's, one, license there's only one premise. That we, we can't differentiate. Yeah. And St. Otis seems like a nice guy and all that stuff. He seems to understand. Um, and when, yeah. when the uh, police come in on December 4th, I think they will show what they actually had and that it, they will make, they will tell us that this fit, what they had was a DJ and that therefore it was a violation. It was for us to decide whether in fact that they, they violated this, uh, this order that we, that we gave them. So um, it will happen on, um, December, 4th. on December 4th and um, we'll do that. But I, I would just say in advance of that, that we have, um, uh, you know, we, we made a decision and we explained the decision. Mm -hmm. that now we have the police coming back to us yeah, with another that. violation of parts. It's a waste right. of everybody's time, but we have yeah. to. I'll present the same to the police. Okay. So, uh, I hope they get pictures of what you're putting out. I'd love to see that, you know, or, you know, off of their phones and whatnot. I wonder if they have some kind of a... Uh, let, them, mean, let them do it. Like it. It's also advertised as, as, a DJ. as a DJ. Well, I see that, and it says, yeah, that's his name, DJ something or other. Mm -hmm. So... so um, yeah, that's right. DJ Stateside, or DJ Stateside. Introduced Jungle DJ Stateside. Oh, that just says he introduced. Where does it say that he's got the DJ? Introduced Jungle DJ Stateside and formed the Sky River Store. Um, we have to decide whether or not this, this violated the, uh, uh, the restricted entertainment license. Again. So that'll happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, I gave you each a copy of an email I received yesterday from the building commissioner. He said that they have already done 44 license inspections, 24 still need to be done. 10 establishments passed on the first inspection. The rest of the inspections will be done by November 14th. All problems have been minor and we expect the certificate to be issued by December 4th. And the other new business is that I want you to see the pending agenda for December 4th because it will have the violation hearing for the Tully O'Reilly, of course, but it will also have under item 5 report of liquor license inspections from the building inspector and fire safety inspector. And then right after that, according to the, what the ABCC told us at a recent seminar, was that I need to put before you all the licenses that are renewing, that are being signed in this month. And you have the ability to approve or disapprove those licenses. And these that I've listed here are the ones that have some question. For instance, um, Ms. Tesney has a buyer, which you will see below, is J.W. Sandry. They've already, we've already put out their legal ad, they've already filed their application, they're waiting for December 4th. Um, some of the others, as I said, have some situations, which will be explained. Um, so... Mr. McColgan will be, right? Uh, yes. Well, he's trying right. to transfer. It's, okay. it's still held at the ABC. It is. What did you, what you, what you just refer to? Oh, the uh, fun dining, DBA oh, Square yeah. Express transfer yeah. application. He's DBA something else now, though. King's Treaty. King's Treaty, yeah. that's right. Okay. Um, I, can, I can have that in. Yeah, yeah, make, yeah make that, because it's no longer Square right. Express. Well, wait a second. What's the story with the clip? They, they don't have this anymore. Well, see, she has until November 26th to come in and sign the papers and tell me she's got a buyer or to not sign the papers or to not renew. And that's why the ABCC says that you as a commission at your December 4th meeting could literally sit there with those applications and say we disapprove the renewal of this application based on the fact that whatever reason. 
Um, so she's had a reasonable amount of time to. Mm -hmm. um, a whole year. Oh, inside Street Cafe. Inside Street Cafe, it's the closed. owner has told me we have the buyer. If their application is filed by December, I'm not sure if it will be. But he has told us that he has the buyer. Can, can I just, I'm sorry, go, go just ahead, one thought. Sorry. It seems like if they're actually applying for the transfer sandry, mm -hmm. shouldn't we hear that before we do the renewal? Actually, um, the license has to be renewed to stay valid to be transferred. Mm -hmm. Because it's as of the 25th. So what I'm, doing, what I'm doing is, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm doing with these particular licenses is if their okay. owners come in with signed papers, I will hold their check until your December 5th okay. meeting because we don't want to take their money if for any reason you want to know. Okay. All right. Could I just make one suggestion, Mary? Yes. Put uh, D and E on that list. So we can take Eric last, because that will take longer. Okay. I'm sorry. Which uh, D and E oh, on D &E. that list. Oh, D and E. Okay. Okay. Because we're gonna, we will use this occasion to, to ask him what we told him he had to be, um, be asked next month, so right? Would you like so it's just Wait, so to for swap. West discuss East. renewal of license uh, for West Street Court. Mm -hmm. That's the old Baptist that's church. The old Baptist church. Okay. So yeah, if that we put that as, right. as the last one there, then we can just run through those others, okay. and then we can then we'll because we're going to get okay. take some time with him um, to discuss that. Mm -hmm. That's right. a separate agenda item for uh, for what we ordered him to do as far as showing up in our next okay. meeting. I can right. He's got either to have way. a building permit in hand. Yeah, either okay. way. So discuss renewal of license there, and we should wrap all that up into one thing. Okay. But in any case, so let these other people. From these. Yeah, or, mm -hmm. or at the end of it, or let the other people go first. Okay. Just getting out. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason being that, I mean, this is the list so far, but by the end of November, I might have more of these for you. Um, or oh, ones that issue. Right, but but technically, according to the ABCC, we should go through this process because you want it to be at a public meeting that you said, yes, you can continue your license because we see you have a buyer gotcha. looming, and we'll allow you to keep it so it doesn't become a pocket place. Okay. Okay. Um. Right. Great. So we'll, there'll be a final edition of this agenda mm -hmm. yes. later. Okay. So there are a bunch of them available for a the hotel. Um, not necessarily. Um, Potential. The equivalent oh. license would be. It's no, it's a line of law license. But it's in the quote. But yeah, but they don't want that. They want an alcohol license. They don't want. To, nobody wants a line of. Oh, beer Side license. Street Cafe. Is That's a line of beer alcohol? license too. Side, These street, are not Side Street is a line of law that converted. So if they don't renew, it would go away. But if they renew because they have a buyer, that buyer wants that license. Okay. But again, that buyer might not be ready by the summer. And and the even the even the Seven Eleven license is not a all alcohol package. Right. So it's, it's a it's a it's a white of beer right. license. Right. That one was not renewed, it would go away, but if you allow her to renew because she has a buyer that already been advertised to the legal app. Do we already know their uh, the buyers? J. W. Sandry is the Sonoco station on yeah. King Street. That's very close. No, 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 that's the side street. That's the package store. store. Uh, what, what's the side street buyer? We don't, I don't know what that is yet. Oh, they they just closed close November 1st. Oh. These licenses are, well, the um, Spoleto Express, now the King Street Eats license, the Eclipse, well, and, and the Side Street license are uh, wine and beer restaurant licenses, which you know, okay. if they go away, we can make them reappear again. Mm -hmm. But it's only wine and beer. The um, Eclipse license happens to be a the, it's not a converted license. It's one of the original all year long wine and malt licenses. So that one actually is you know, isn't one of these ones that we sort of create out of thin air and then convert and then 
and they can go away. This one is a real license with, with a value which she can sell. On the other hand, if she doesn't renew it, we don't necessarily, um, well, it would be available, but I can't keep a list. I can't, I can't keep like a favorite list of calling this person first or that. No, right, right, right. Sure. So the only all alcohol license on here is back to the Baptist okay. Church. All right. So that would be that would have been the one available for Con Street. Um, the um, only other one that's come up for sale recently has, was uh, Union Station, and that got sold to to Jeremiah Mecca, and they're opening now. We we approved that. Matt Matt Petonia sold. Union Station, and he sold the liquor license, yeah. and we approved it. Oh, oh, they the remember the, yeah. the deck, and he, they started opening with the deck, and now they're getting the rest of it open. So the front of the place is going to be a restaurant, the back of it is going to be functions. So that's the only other liquor license that's come up for sale, all alcohol license in the city recently. And well, the last one before that was two years ago, when we talked about the silent cow, and then surrendered their wine and all. Yeah, if Silent Cow had gone out of business and said, I'm not going to hold on to this, I'm going to sell it, it this is a thing of value. And that's why this is such an anomalous situation here, so we've got two things of value and they're not well, used. Well, again, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine what the logic is, but he's been doing all kinds of things. He's sitting on uh, for that, you know, for Well, you know, but, yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, any other new business? Who will be adjourned? Oh, okay. Okay. Right.